Good Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Thank you. I will be coming back just in two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Take your time. Yeah. Thank you.
Okay, everybody, welcome to the class tonight. It's a pleasure to see you once again. We're starting this week. Next week is the final week, so we are very close. I hope you're doing the platform. Remember that by the next week, we need to finish every single thing. So it's very important. During the week, maybe at the end of this week, I will be sending you via chat who's missing some parts, so you work on that. So before we move on, of course, we're gonna check about the platform. This is the class of today. And this is the question for tonight. So you can uh, participate in that one. And the homework that you should be doing is the 3.5. That is uh, read the following definitions and match them to the words. So those are the ones that are four questions only. Okay, as usual, we're going to check the attendance. Silence. Silence. Okay. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Very good, perfect. So today we are going to continue with the, we were checking about the strengths and weaknesses of every generation. So we're going to continue with that one and learn some other things about this. So here we go. So it says the strengths and weaknesses of every generation in your work first. So the first two paragraphs are going to be for Yvonne. Could you please help me with that? Hello, Yvonne, are you able to read? Okay, not possible. Marcos, could you please help us with the first two paragraphs? Okay. Good. Uh, the term generation is traditionally used to refer to a group of people born and living during the same period of time, which, which usually spans 15 years. With four different generations making up today's workforce, it can be difficult understanding what they all need and where they are best utilized. Each group brings a different dynamic to the table. But the only way to truly harness their potential is to understand their generational characteristics. That said, the supposed difference between generations in the workplace are more complex than many people realize. While we can see typical generational strength and weakness coming through prior, 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 prioritizing. Prioritizing, sorry. <laughs> Continuous learning in your company can help you build a, ne a network of value, valuable connect professionals, no matter their age. Very good, perfect. What did you get from this? Okay, um, I understand that. And the generation, um, according to this paragraph, it means that is a, a group of people born and living during the same period and it spans 15 years. And the 
the maximum between their different age. And yeah, in the, in the workplace, the workforce is important to understand in which aspect they are more useful than others. So we can um, leverage their potential and we can, oh, the, the boss can um, set up all the worst, the workers to, to get the better results. So it's important to understand their weakness and their strengths based on um, the, the generations. Very good, perfect. So that is it, right? So based on some characteristics about what is their generation, we can analyze. You know, this is important not only in the at work, I mean, with the employees, but also when you have uh, when you have like clients and you are managing other other kind of situations, that is also very important. So it's it's a good idea to learn about this one. So I said the different generations and how they work. So this time we're going to check about baby boomers, Gen X, millennials, of course, and Gen Z. So Let's start with uh, the baby boomers. It says there are a number of a number of strengths and weaknesses that can generally be found in each working generation. So, baby boomers strengths. Uh, Jose Wilfredo, could you please help me with this? Yes, of course. Okay. Baby boomers strengths. Boomers are characterized as being workaholics or relish long weeks long weeks and over time they are more committed to their roles than any other generation baby boomers are considered good team players with 53 percent of organizations say saying they work well with others <clears throat> and the professionals in this generation are regarded as making excellent mentor to their colleagues and junior in the organization. Well, what do you get from this one? Well, in this case, teacher, maybe baby move boomers are really workaholic, maybe because the, the actual job is not compared with the job uh, or maybe 20 years ago. And it's really easy to, to, to do because you can use your computer or whatever kind of um, machinery to complete the job. And also um, they say that they like uh, team, um, they may a good team players because maybe they only want to know one thing, not like in the past. In the past, maybe that person uh, know all the process and end the job uh, by themselves. So that's why maybe they, that's cool, that's cool called like a comedy. Mm -hmm. And the last one, the last part, maybe they don't want to invest a lot of time uh, a study they uh, in the last point that says that they are a good or excellent mentor. Maybe in that case they um, they only want to know one thing. Maybe they don't want to study the the complete career. That's what I get. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So you can see here about baby boomers and then. Analyzing these things, you can say that uh, depending on what is the organization and what is your role, you can let them work with other teams so they can also uh, work very hard. So if you want somebody that is going to be working a lot of time, they are the good ones, right? And also they are very good by teaching to other people. I mean, so if you want somebody to learn a new hire, for example, you can send them with a baby boomer so they will be able to. 
to help the people they enjoy that part. So interesting. So baby boomers from the 46 to the 64. So weaknesses for this one. Juan Miguel Brown, could you please help me with that one? I guess it's not possible. Okay, Jose Rivas, could you please help me with the weaknesses paragraph? Not possible. Okay, Ada Susana. Okay, teacher. The witnesses. Witness. Yes. Okay. Uh, is the generation has preference for a structure and discipline and are less inclined to welcome change. The boomer is competitive, so they now recognize recognition. Recognition. And recognition and rewards to keep them motivated to achieve more. Baby boomers are regarded as the less the dash. Okay. So we are savvy. less savvy of all generation prohibiting their ability to keep up to keep up with the development. Um, I think the, the baby boomers for me is uh, we also the characteristics for the discipline and are the inclined to welcome uh, or the cha change the uh, the change in general. And we also the characteristic uh, at war be beginning a passion about uh, they work and seeking job stability in the work and we love then contracts uh, retiring from the company com, 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 companies teacher companies the companies was their goal that because it's guaranteed the pace of the mean and be behind and instead of comfort is uh, is the is that the the group the people is a uh, uh, customer a uh, 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 customer at the change for the the food the food okay perfect very well so yes some weaknesses that they might have it's not that it's for sure right but they don't like changes that much so you need to be patient with them whenever you want to change something right also they are competitive but they need recognition and rewards so uh, you need to go and tell them that they're doing a good job other than that they are going to feel that they are not that motivated and they don't like that much the technology maybe they it's not that they don't like but they're not that tech savvy right so they will be they you need to be patient whenever you're going to teach them about some new software or a device that they want or they need to use so that is it um, of course, you know what is to be tech savvy, right? What is that? People knowledgeable with uh, technology. Very good. Do you know mm, a lot, let's say, mm -hmm. about technology. Good. And what is discipline? Uh, the dog knows. The same as in Spanish? It's, yeah, uh, well, yeah, even in Spanish has like some yeah. uses, right? Because discipline mm -hmm. might be like a discipline of the art, for example, or um, in this case also can be like uh, when you, when you say I'm going to train every day for hours and you have the discipline to do it, right? So, mm, okay. might be something like that. Good. Okay, let's move on to the Gen X. That is, as you can remember, from the 65 to the 76. So this is different, right? The other one I remember that was to the 80s. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, that was what I was going to ask you, if it, if it is a standard. That's the problem because some scientists, they believe that this is uh, around the 80s. Some others say that it's around the other ones. So maybe the one that are more like 
like um, agree that they, they agree is the one from millennials that is up to the 94, 95, something like that. But this one depend on many factors. Sometimes they they have the the boundary for that one in the 76 and the 78 and the 80. So it's going to be around that one. Maybe it's because there are like different schools of thinking. I mean, yeah, psychologists sometimes they they have different studies, they have different uh, behaviors that they accumulate in different uh, generations, right? So mm -hmm. and and different cultural events that impact our lives. So that's why some some of them they say no, it's until here, and some others they say no, it's until here. So. Mm -hmm. It's like open, but if you were born, let's say in the 84, of course, that is a different one, right? So it's the millennials. Okay, so, but anyways, let's check about the strengths on the Generation X. Uh, let's see, uh, Giselle, could you please help me with the strengths on this one? Yes, sure, sure. Okay, Gen X, just the strengths? Yes, please. Okay, strengths. The majority of organizations, 70%, uh, believe Gen X are the best overall workers. These professionals are committed to juggling work with family time and favor work-life uh, work balance in, or, in an organization. Gen X is considered to, the, to be the biggest revenue generators overall. Okay, what did you get from this? Mm, I think that maybe um, if we can compare with the, maybe with the boomers, um, the boomers are very competitive. And I, I remember that, 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 that we mentioned, the text mentioned that they, are, they could be workaholics. And this generation, Gen X, uh, mentioned that they uh, committed to jungling work with family time and favor work life balance in other organizations. So maybe this generation are very committed too, but they uh, at this, at this, uh, at this, I don't know, in, in the timeline, this generation maybe wants to 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 have a like a maybe a balance between the work and the family time, so maybe they are they could be very committed to, but maybe not just to workaholic like the boomers. So yeah, I think that that's the the my opinion and and the thing that I think that that maybe could be more important or maybe a difference between the boomers and the Gen X. Perfect, thank you. So yes, you can see here, well, maybe the first one is very strong. The best overall workers, mm, I mean, that depends on many things, right? Maybe you are a millennial and you are a very good worker, but maybe in general, they have identified that they do some things, right? And the second one, yeah, they are committed to juggling. Do you know what is juggling? No, no did you? Okay, that is like mix. So they are able to mix and, I mean, not to leave abandon the family time, but they will be able to work a few hours. And also oh. it's a motivation for them, the family as well. Like so it's going balance? to balance? Like a balance, yeah. So they will okay. be able to, to balance that one. And favor work-life balance in an organization. So they will be able to to work a little bit more, but as, as Giselle said, not a workaholic, right? So that is a very good thing because then they are happy, right? And says considered to be the biggest revenue generator generators of it all. So that is interesting. Maybe maybe in the future I can look for some statistics about this one because these words are kind of very strange. But anyways, revenue, what is revenue? Money. Money, 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 good. So, and there is no that I guess. So the weaknesses, let's see now, um, Juan Miguel. Okay, weaknesses. Less than 40% of Gen X are satisfied with the, with the senior management in their organization. 
this generation is less incl inclined. Inclined. Yeah, inclined. Okay, inclined to say something if they disagree with the management than their su successive generations. <clears throat> Gen X value being, Gen X value being able to do things quickly and are less inclined, inclined to spend hours of overtime complaining sometime, something perfectly. Good, what did you get from that? Uh, for the first one, eh, okay, I, I, um, less than 40% are satisfied with the senior management in their organization. Okay, eh, in, I, I, I'm reading this and I, eh, I compare with some, with some example, okay? Eh, <clears throat> there are organizations that the senior management or the management in general are seniors, okay? But, or, or are uh, not young people, uh, but uh, not elderly, okay? But uh, from 40 to, to 60 years, okay? And uh, most of Gen X are, obviously younger than, than, than they, okay? Um, Gen X have a, maybe a, or, or now, now a other ways to do something, okay? But <clears throat> like the management said that you have to do something like this, you have to do something like this. Instead, a, the idea that uh, Gen Xers have, but like the second idea says, if they disagree, uh, or, or how can I say this? Um, they could be disagree with the with the with the ideas, with the I don't know how to say more ordenes or instructions. Instructions or directions. Okay, with the with the directions, but uh, they prefer to stay shut up. Okay, instead uh, say that. Uh, okay, uh, the thing that you told me, uh, I can do for. Uh, why I can do this way, not not your way, but. Okay, I will. I will do the way that you want in order to uh, don't be um, or don't an anger you, okay? I don't know if, 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 you, if I am saying the right thing, okay? Okay, yeah, the idea is and, very good, yeah. And, and for the last idea, uh, in my case, I have this, this thinking, okay? If I, if I have, no, how, how to say this? If I can do something in my, uh, how to say this? Como en el tiempo, en el tiempo que tiene que ser, or in, in, in the schedule, okay? Okay, on schedule. Okay, on schedule, okay. If I, ha if I um, can do something in the schedule, why will I uh, do overtime only for satisfying the management? Okay, I don't know. I, I, I don't know I, why I don't find this logic. Okay, but there are some people that I will say like this: they like that you that you do a uh, bot hours. Okay, horas <laughs> nalga. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. In order to just um, satisfy them. Okay, but maybe you complete your tasks uh, on a schedule. And you have to be there just for them, not doing something productive, okay? Okay, very good. Yes, actually that is it. I mean, the first and the second one, as you say, they are related, right? So sometimes, well, most of them, not most, but 40%, they say, uh, they are not that happy with the senior management, with the upper management, I mean, the decisions that they make. And then, they are inclined, they don't stay quiet, they say what they don't like, and that may cause some uh, 
disagreements, some conflicts, right? Of course, at the end, they have to do what their boss say, but definitely that is something that the bosses don't, don't like, right? If you are the boss and you have an idea and they say, no, this is not a good idea. Well, you, you are like not that happy. And uh, yeah, the last one is related also with the other one in the strengths that they are very, they are the biggest revenue generators because they do not work that many extra hours. They do the same job that other people do in more hours in less time. So of course that is going to be more profitable for the companies. Very good. Let's okay, check. Sir, thank, you. thank you, actually. Let's check about millennials and Yen Y. I mean, you can say both name, but millennials is there, the most common. So this is going to be for Heidi. Okay, strengths, right? Yep. Of all generations currently featuring in the workforce, millennials are considered the most independent workers. Millennials are concerned with ethics and the social responsibility of the organization they work for. Millennials have grown up sourcing information. They need to be left to create their own process rather than being told exactly what to do. Okay, what did you get from this? It's, it's, it's absolutely true. These, these guys are very independent. They add all the information and they do a lot of work in less time. Okay. And uh, uh, yes, that is true. I mean, that is, uh, it's very good. I mean, they are independent. They are not always coming for direction. Like, what do I do here? And then what do I do? So that is good. Also, yeah, I also, also agree with the second one that they are very concerned about ethics and social responsibility. That's why they try to change the world, right? At least they try. And have grown up sourcing information, so they need to, they need to be left to be creative, right? So they want to do their own way of being things. Very good. Okay, weaknesses of millennial. Uh, Yvonne, is it possible for you? Not possible. Francisco Eduardo. Hello, Francisco. Not possible. Danny. Yeah, sure. Perfect, thank you. Uh, what, uh, what paragraph? It will be weaknesses, this one. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> weaknesses. Due to their independent natures, Millennials are not as interested in teamwork as other generations. Uh, millennials do not have a, a strong a work ethic uh, with an average of 38.8 hours spent at work a week compared to previous generations who both average above 14 hours. And <clears throat> this generation is impatient when it comes to career growth. 49% are likely to live before two years if they feel their skills are not being developed. Cool, what do you get from this? Well, um, I remember all the things that, <laughs> the many teamwork, um, yeah, teamwork, uh, or teammate, uh, or workmate, uh, said in, in my job in my previous job about our the <laughs> about us the millennials they say many things that we are like this or like this we uh, we um, we bored very very fast <laughs> and all the kind of things and i think not everyone is like that i, I don't know it, it depends on the, the growth the race, I don't know how to say, of the parents' race. I hope um, they were raised, huh? Yeah. 
And, but it, it, this, it, this is about the, 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 the weakness of the millennials. And many, I, I, <laughs> I have um, friends, some friends that are like this, like the paragraph said, but not everyone, I think. <laughs> yeah. the, they don't want to work in, in team. They, um, they don't want to work um, 48 or 14 hours a week. And they get bored very fast. And, and they want to um, get a better position so fast in the, in the job. Um, they they feel I don't know they feel like uh, well I'm a genius here and <laughs> obey me or something like that but like I said before no 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 everyone tries <laughs> okay perfect yes actually you are so right yeah we need to understand that this is just a guide not everyone is going to be exactly like that. Maybe some people will, is going to have like some characteristics, some others are not, because it depends also, as you say, about their home and the environment they uh, were they were developed, right? So that is very important. But it's interesting that uh, you say some things that, that are not included here. So it's interesting. And maybe one of the things that happen is that in the media, in the social media, they are kind of attacks, right? Like jokes or memes. But of course, not everyone is like that. There are people that don't know many things, but that is in every generation, right? Okay, Gen Z, we haven't checked on that one before, but we're going to do it right now. Uh, the strings, let's see, uh, Fernando, is it possible for you? Not possible, okay. Uh, let's see then, Roxana. Okay. Strengths. Strength. The most tech com competent of any generations, member of Gen S is, is Z. Z, sorry, Z, are able to pick up new developments quicker than other employer employees. This generation is particularly ambitious with two, three, two thirds. Two thirds. Of, uh. thirds of Gen C, saying their goals in life is to make it to the top of their professions. Gen C are natural entrepreneurs with 32%. Uh, well, Waiting, está separado. Waiting to start their own business in higher people. Describe has the describe has the always own generation. Gen Z are able to multitask unlike any other generation, using up to five screen at once. Okay, what did you get from this one, Roxanne? Well, the first one, uh, I think that the paragraph is clear when say that general C is quickly to get a lot, of, a lot of process than other generations because they have maybe, I don't know if it's more a facility to understand or knowledge maybe, but in general, Maybe they they have um, they they no ellos fueron, they were too jungers to into the technologies maybe yeah actually they were born into the technology right they yeah. had the technology right uh -huh. yeah in our case maybe when the technology was uh, increased we need to um, focus in in try to understand the technology, but they born with the technology. And now one kid maybe have more knowledge about than some apps or some place than you. So in general, they have a lot of, uh, 
como habilidad, skills, right? Skills, uh -huh. skills with technology. And maybe uh, the, um, the pandemic show that that group of person have the ability to have the, to create the new ideas and show a new enterprise, maybe? Okay. How do you say emprendedores? Entrepreneurs. Entrepre yeah, okay. So that's why uh, when the pandemic started, show a lot of entrepreneurs and now they could uh, get a strong and a strong uh, company or something like that. In general, uh, I think that Gen Z uh, are able to create easier than us or the rest because they are uh, maybe open mind with a lot of topic and it's easy. Okay, perfect. So yes, this is actually the other generation, right? So definitely mm -hmm. they are more competent in, in the technology because I mean, they were burned to that one as we discuss as Roxanne said. They say they are particularly ambitious and they say that they want to go to the top of their profession. They want to be, let's see what happens, right? Because we still have the idea what's going to happen on that one. Also, they want to be entrepreneurs. They want to get their own business. Also, that is a very good idea. Let's see what happens, right? And uh, well, the last one is very good because they are they were born into the technology, they are able to multitask. Uh, unlike any other generations, so they are going to be very good at doing many things at the same time. And actually, I believe that is true. I mean, they are watching TV, playing video games, listening to music at the same time and focus on everything at the same time. So it's interesting. Good, good. Uh, of course, you know what is entrepreneurs. What is that? In English. Entrepreneur. Yep. Someone that start doing business so most of the time with their own ideas, their own projects. Um, those are entrepreneurs. Very good. People that they want to run their own business, right? That is it. Uh, of course, you know, but let's practice. What is multitask? The yeah, one able to do a lot of things at the same time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Women are like that a lot, right? Women can cook and watch TV and and mm. fight with the husband at the same time. So and the brain is like around to explode. <laughs> yeah. Like about to explode. Yeah. So they are more like that in my own experience, what I have seen. But yeah, this generation is more multitask, right? So they are more into that one because as we say. Sometimes they are doing many things at the same time. So since they were kids, so they are able to. Let's check about weaknesses. That is going to be for Ana Claudia. Could you please help me with this? Sure. Uh, Gen Z are regarded as more cynical. Cynical. Like the... Huh? Yeah, that's the one. Cynical. Oh, okay. That their predecessors. Favoring a realistic outlook over the idealism of Gen Y. Gen Z don't know much about time before social media and easily accessible tech. This can make them very reliant on technology to solve problems. Okay, what did you get from this? That's true because <laughs> I made an experiment with my with my niece, niece, yes, Orina, niece. Yep. Uh, so she was looking for a word uh, and she was Googling and I said, hey, you know, the dictionary is right there. There are two dictionaries right there. Let's look for it. And I was teaching her how to use a dictionary. My God, <laughs> no, she didn't get it. And yes, they depend a lot on technology. Everything Google has the answer, which is not true. And they believe whatever Google says about history. And that is, uh, that is uh, a risk, a risk 
to to fall because uh, not all the information listed in Google is true. So they don't know how to identify like real sources and people who just write like in YouTube or in any social media, they just write just to make money because most you replay the most you repost on their, what they do or what they say, they are earning money, they are making revenue. So in this case, yes, I agree with that because they depend uh, just in technology. Very good, perfect. Yes, that is true. I mean, since they were born like that and they have everything there at hand, uh, yeah, they, they are very dependable. And also mm -hmm. another thing that you say is very true. I mean, sometimes they believe everything that is there. Maybe not everything, but the most of the things, right? Mm -hmm. So they need to be more critical. They need to research in different ways. Okay. So, right. yeah. They have to research because it's a waste of time for them. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So they're used to get something fast, right? Just uh -huh. look for something, maybe read two or three articles and they say, hey, this is it, right, whatever. Mm -hmm. so, but other generations more like, let's research, let's read, let's mm -hmm. compare, let's do something like that. But I guess that with time, they need to learn about that one. They should because uh, uh, other than that, they will have some problems in life, right? So mm -hmm. that's the way. Good, and the first one is interesting. I mean, they are more cynical. So they are more, not that, I mean, so they said that maybe the Gen Y is idealist. I mean, they believe that everything is going to improve. I don't think it's like that, but maybe they are even more cynical than the, the other ones that we have before, right? So that is interesting. Okay, uh, let's see. We're going to read the last paragraph here. This one is going to be for Ramon. Are you here with us? No, Raymond. Ah, that's Senna. Hello, teacher. Sir. Hey, how are you? Thank you? Yeah, could you please read this paragraph? The uh, development. Yeah, please. Development your workforce. Each generation brings something uniquely. 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 Value. 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 The workforce by understanding what they have to offer. You can identify training and development opportunities that will align align with their unique strengths. It is which also help you get gauge sky gaps my life so that so that you can priorities prioritize them, prioritize feeling them. Read more about the wise is which you can assist employees needs in implement development strategies in your organization in the article below. It's a it's a development is a, a the workforce the the um, the, the organization is depend the implement uh, different different opportunities for the, 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 the people. Only oh, that. Very good, perfect. So why is it important to check into this one? Because everybody is different, but it's going to be easier for you to understand somebody if you, if you are aware of the generation that they are, right? So then you say, oh, this person is like this because maybe it's kind of a millennial or it's a, a a baby boomer, so I need to be patient on this one, and, and I can, I can uh, take advantage of these other things if we want to check into that one. So it's a very good idea. I'm taking my piece of cake to sell. <laughs> yeah, actually, as I was telling you, it's not just for mm -hmm. your employees, but with people, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, in your experience, I know that whenever you speak with elderly people, mm -hmm. you need to be more patient, 
explain they need details right mm -hmm. you need to understand everything and they have a lot of questions if possible they are going to go again to the store again two three mm -hmm. times for them mm -hmm. to understand so it's part of what they are they like that way right maybe mm -hmm. a millennial is going to go there and say what is this okay i'm gonna buy it bye see you so it's different <laughs> right. yes so yes, it's going to it's going to be helpful for everything. I mean, even to understand our family, right? Our, our auntie or friends. So we understand now a little bit better that one. So I have a question for you. Speaking about these, um, all what we had checked about all the generations. Uh, which workers do you believe are? Uh, the most common worker nowadays in our company. So we have more baby boomers, more Gen X, more millennials, or more Gen Z. Gen X. Gen X, that is the most of the people in the company. Is what I think. Okay, very good. What do other people believe? In, their, in your companies, do you have more Gen X, more millennials, more baby boomers? In my company, I think that Gen X to, okay. Good. Maybe it depends of the of the company or or the area. Yeah. yeah, because for example, maybe in the call centers, maybe millennials mm -hmm. uh, are the the most. They have more presence in that. I don't know how to say it. In that industry. Huh? In that industry, yeah. Thank you. Okay, very good, perfect. So yeah, that is true. I mean. And that is also interesting because some kind of people, they look for some kind of job, right? They uh, want to do something according to what they really are. So that is, that is uh, interesting because not all the companies are going to be the same. Not all the, actually not all the, the careers, right? For example, a lot of people uh, are studying right now the, uh, about programming and things that probably you are not going to find a baby boomer there. I mean, I don't think we're going to find them. Maybe some of Gen X, but the most of the people are going to be millennials, the ones that are into that one. And definitely the ones that come from Gen Z, they are going to understand that a lot, a lot. So that happens a lot in industries. That happens a lot, a lot in, in everyday activities, right? So if you, if you imagine that you are in human resources and you need to hire a person, which generation would you prefer to work with? In your opinion, in general, of course. Mm -hmm. If you want, if you want some some uh, someone practical, I could be choose Gen Z. Okay, Gen Z. Very nice, interesting, because they are more practical. They are like, this is like this, and let's do it right now, right? Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, may maybe uh, uh, Gen Z could be uh, better with processes that are uh, repeatable or activities that are, that, that are repeatable uh, <clears throat> where, where is a... Uh, where, where is technology or oh, donde hay tecnología? Uh -huh. Regarding technology. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, that is true. So whenever there is technology and they are able to use computers, devices, internet, of course, I believe that they are going to be very happy working on that but, one. But uh, um, in my case, I have some uh, experience with, with these people, okay? That you have to... Uh, to bring them uh, the instructions in details, but in very detail, because if you miss uh, some step, <clears throat> they they <clears throat> sorry they could uh, they could lose uh, the como how to say this the thread uh huh the thread and they are focused on the things not not will not with uh, 
millennial people. <clears throat> okay. You are uh, giving the instructions to millennial people and uh, by the practice, they know or they, um, uh, they know or they develop her own way to solve the things. So if if a me if a pass or no if a step is missing or if a machine is missing or something uh, that they need is not complete, they look the ways uh, the, or the better way in order to complete the task or to complete the instruction that you gave them uh, before. But not Gen, Gen C, they could, como uh, ellos tienden, uh, they, uh, they tend. They tend to, to have everything they need in order to complete the task. Not, not, uh, not, uh, this is not, this is not apply with millennials. Okay. Okay, perfect. So yeah, that is absolutely very interesting because the two things that you mentioned are very important. I mean, they, since they depend on the technology, if something happens to the device, they won't be able to do something, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also they need to, to have all the steps very clear. And also they can get distracted very easy. I mean, that is yeah. maybe not a good thing, right? So yeah, but uh, of course that depends on many situations they get frustrated very quickly if they don't uh, have some device or some tech device. <laughs> yeah, interesting. That is interesting because, uh, yeah, you can see that there are many advantages and disadvantages, speaking in general, of course. Any other opinion? Which would you prefer to work with? In my opinion, uh, whatever it kind of does generation is really important. Just that you have to take a little bit time for one of those, but doesn't matter. Actually, your opinion is interesting. I mean, maybe it's a very good idea in a company to have balance, right? To have, yeah. depending on the position or the activities that they are going to do, the skills that they need, then you can decide. But now, imagine that if you work for human resources, maybe this is a thing that you have to take in consideration whenever you are going to hire a person. Right? So identify, depending on the- uh -huh, go ahead. We, uh, Maybe the, the thing from human resources will be for what, eight, we can choose two, on every generation to to take a really good decision. That is it. So I don't know if they really do that one, if they really take in consideration about generational things. Whenever they are hiring people, I guess it's more like individual, right? It's like, mm -hmm. can you do this? Can you do this other thing? Tell me about yourself. So things like that are very... Because... The experience is really necessary on every company. Yeah. And the youngest too. Yeah, and that's why. the skills that they need and how they handle the technology, how they can yeah. follow instructions, the availability that they have to, to work, right? So we know that the newest generation, they don't want to work that many hours. And then... The, those things are very important, right? Yeah, course, that's right. Of course, but there are for those ahead. times. For those times, teacher, I guess that maybe the the gen baby boomers and Gen X, they uh, have a lot of uh, electronic devices. Yeah, maybe there are not. Maybe baby boomers are the ones that don't like that many that much right so yeah it should be something to consider right of course as i was telling you there are procedures for you to identify the best option when you are going to have some people and another problem that we have is that at least here in El Salvador, i guess in latin america 
When you go to an interview, you say, yes, right, yes, I can come on Saturdays and Sundays. Yes, I can stay at night. But whenever you are in the position, it's like, oh, again, do I have to come on Saturdays and Sundays? So that happens a lot because you need the job. Sometimes you, you say in the interview, yes, I will be able to learn this or to do this. But whenever you are in the position, you are like, oh, my goodness, that was true. I didn't know that <laughs> that was going to happen, right? So. But yeah. that's why you have to, to make some tests to hire someone. That is so true. Yeah. And there are things that they consider, right? Some people, I mean, for interviews, they consider where you live, for example. If we need you to be here very early, you cannot be late. So if you live very far away, maybe it's not a good idea, right? So there are many mm -hmm. things that they need to consider. Good, perfect. So we're going to stop for a while and then we're going to check the attendance. Let's see. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Blanc Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Present teacher. Okay, good. Thank you. And Roberto. Okay. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleyma Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. Okay, so we are going to continue. Uh, let me just check into this. Got you, Yvonne. Good. Okay. So describe stereotypes about millennials. We're going to, well, we discussed already about strengths and weaknesses. So we're going to speak about in general stereotypes. So the first part, this introduction on this one is going to be for um, Jose Wilfredo. Could you please help me with this? Yes. Um, in social psychology, psychology, uh, psychology, a stereotype is a generalized belief about a particular category of people. It is an expectation that the people may have about every person of a particular group. The type of expectation can vary. It can be, for example, an expectation about the group's personality, preferences, appearance, or ability. Stereotypes are sometimes overgeneralized, inaccurate, and resistant to new information, but can sometimes be accurate. While, while such gener generalizations Generalizations. About group, generalization about groups of people may be useful when making quick decision. They may be erroneous when applied to particular individuals and are among the reason for pre, pre, prejudicial, prejudicial attitudes. Very well. Okay, so now, what did you get from this? Well, this is like 
pre prejudices prejudices uh, uh, how how you pronounce uh, prejudices prejudices mm -hmm. yeah when you prejudices uh, about someone that maybe you don't know and also uh, that happened a lot because um, that could be when you are looking for a job and you have a one interview where and maybe you make a one mistake and that person maybe well the the the, the person that uh, is making the the interview maybe think that the person that wants the job doesn't know anything but could be totally different because maybe the, the, the person that is looking for a job is a really good master um what whatever thing that that person do and also maybe has a good uh, scholarship uh, to achieve the goals that the company maybe have that the company maybe wants so we have to to analyze first and well we have to analyze the complete interview to describe the, the, the people that maybe is applying to the job. And for the all things too, not only for our job. Definitely. So yeah, that happens with stereotypes. I mean, I believe mm -hmm. that we all have heard and we all sometimes have used some stereotypes. And uh, some of them might be like positive so might be negative and uh, some of them they say is accurate but the most of the cases is it's not good right i mean mm -hmm. it's like for example when i say i'm from santana everybody believes that i i put my my bread into the coffee right and i eat it like that and i never do <laughs> yeah, that. but i guess that that uh, that custom could be custom yeah yeah it's, it's something that, like that, that right? so people believe is... that because of something you are like that and uh, well it's maybe it's true and maybe not right yeah i guess that is general for from el salvador teacher you believe yeah yeah i do it and i have a lot of friends from san miguel that they, do, they it do it too. yeah that is true they, I have, yeah. I have, yeah. yeah yeah very good i can relate i'm from san miguel <laughs> oh, okay very good <laughs> <laughs> let's let's do it <laughs> yeah so that is yeah. like a stereotype right so and the yeah. thing is that yes we were saying uh, i mean it's interesting because we're speaking about generations i mean characteristics of generation strengths and weaknesses and those that we were reading are stereotypes right actually danny was saying i i am not like that right but yeah, some people may be like that. So those are stereotypes. And yeah, maybe you know, teacher. Maybe they only think what else, they think what the other people think. If you do something or something like that, that, that you have to be yourself in every single place. Okay, very good. I like that idea. Very nice. Right. And, Actually, uh, yeah, we can take in consideration about the characteristics of generations, but we need to be careful not yeah. to, to have stereotypes about them. And that's why. Yeah, we're that's right. We're and also avoid and respect the other period. Definitely. So even though you might think that they are one or the other way, uh, you are there to, to help them do the job right. And that is it. And if you become a friend, then you can help them grow as a person and they can help you as well so yeah that's right good good so avoiding stereotypes in the workplace is the topic and it says a stereotype is a preconceived notion about a person or group of people where we sometimes unfairly believe that all people or things with a particular characteristic are the same promoting a non-discriminatory workplace with openness and acceptance of individual differences helps in preventing common negative effects caused by stereotyping. So yes, we need to consider about 
characteristics of some generations, but we need to be careful about stereotypes. So let's read about this one. Okay, it says negative effects of stereotypes. Uh, Juan Miguel, could you please read the first part? Only the first two parts, some and then conflict. Okay. Okay, negative effects of stereotypes. Some of the negative effects of stereotypes in the workplace include conflict or com conflict or conflict. 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 Employees who are based, based on stereotypes rather than putting faith in the abilities and effort of co-workers impede, impede, impede. impede progress. Okay, so what do you get from that? Um, <clears throat> I think it's a very common uh, attitude or a stereotype. Um, maybe you expect uh, some kind on, or some type of people in order to, to do something, okay, in your organization. And the person who arrives at the company or who, who is a new in the company is um, too different uh, like you thought. So uh, <clears throat> there are people who are uh, prejuiciada. Prejudice. Prejudice. Uh, and this, this, uh, Attitude is very <clears throat> um, how to say this very difficult to uh, come on how to say this to forget not not to forget to to uh, como superar to overcome okay to overcome until maybe uh, the two people that. Uh, the new one and the and the older one in the company, they uh, work together. So uh, at this time, the people uh, or the person who has more time in the company, they realize that the new one is uh, maybe better than uh, the person. Uh, expect so um i think this is a, a a negative a very negative effect of being a, um, a stereotype okay very good yeah i mean that happens if you stereotype somebody at the end sometimes there might be a conflict because of many things because if you say something about that person or because you believe that they cannot do certain activities, definitely it's going to cause a conflict. <clears throat> so, because the way that you treat other people is not the way it should be. Good. Uh, Danny, could you please read the next one? Low morale. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Low morale. Stereo stereotyping can cause low morale for the individual or group <clears throat> impact and could potentially make for a toxic work environment. Employees who face constant comments, criticisms, criticisms, or other negative results for stereotyping can lose motivation and interest in performing the jobs. What did you get from this? Yeah, uh, that is actually true. And when someone is um, stereotyping, stereotyping, is the word correct? <laughs> um, or, or put in some case <laughs> or some label, and they are, their feeling are very, very bad. Uh, no, no one wants to <laughs> to 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 feel like that for for the co-workers. Like, um, 
in that uh, impact the, the employee motivation and all the uh, work environment is uh, is affected and in the result yeah and, and i agree with with this very good perfect yeah definitely if something happens one people uh, or two people are going to be with low morale and then all oh, the whole company is not going to work properly so it's a negative effect of this one definitely lower productivity and retention that is going to be for other uh, senna the limitation and a lower a lower the lower productivity and retain retention production and retention are like to be lower is if morally is low and individual individuals are not in the supportive inclusive environment okay what do you get from that no teacher okay so yeah this is linked for the things that danny said at the beginning right if morale if motivation is not good at the end the productivity is not going to be fine and also the retention i mean attrition might increase people are not happy at work and they are going to start looking for another job and then you need to hire another person and then thinking about the impact of money on training them so it's a big thing right no not good not good at all the other one says litigation anna claudia Sure. Um, you say uh, litigation, litigation, right? Okay. Yeah, that's one. The work environment should not accept discrimination or mistreatment based on personal qualities. The Human Resources Department is responsible for investigating violations and enforcing fair policies in the workplace. There is always the potential that someone affected by discriminatory behaviors in the workplace will sue. This can be financially damaging for the business as well the business reputation. Okay, what did you get from that? Uh, well, that's true. Well, in the call center environment, you know, we are uh, mm, educated, let's say in that way, to respect uh, each other. Uh, it doesn't matter their religion, their way of thinking or the way of life. So it's like uh, they make us to respect la um the environment and if somebody feels like uh mistreat you can uh, reach to the human resources department but if this is not uh, well handled uh, the thing is that people feels uh, or they what they do is um, they can sue the not only the one who mistreat them but also the company because they can say the company didn't take care or something like that, you know? Yeah, uh, very true. We are a lot of crazy people in the call center, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's true what you say. They need to be careful about that one to prevent instead mm -hmm. of- Prevent. Right. Religion things, uh, also sport things sometimes. Uh, they are topics like uh, to avoid in order to not uh, make him feel bad to the other one. Yeah, a lot of things. Very true. Yeah, so yeah, there are things that you prefer not to discuss, right? So because mm -hmm. there are people that can get too, too fanatic up to anything. Mm -hmm. and, and, maybe and, and maybe someone can uh, make like a kind of joke but they can feel hard. And you know, yeah. all these new generations, uh, uh, by the way, they are like, I've heard this multiple times, they are like crystal people. Yeah. So, and they take like uh, extremely decisions, like they kill themselves, kill themselves because somebody made a joke or somebody made something everything default now has the bullying thing etc 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 
yeah, that is true. I mean, maybe for us, one thing, uh, one comment might be very, I mean, like a joke, but mm -hmm. we don't know uh, the perception of the other people, the feelings mm -hmm. or the moment that they are going through. So it's kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. The other one says, where do stereotypes come from, as you saw? Okay, teacher. Where do stereotypes come from? Stereotypes can easily form in our minds as part of socialization in our, in our cultures from personal experiences, media, peers, and our family. We learn rules and expectations regarding who is given status and who isn't, who is capable and who isn't, or even what is attractive and what isn't. These stereotypes can be conscious, something that we are aware of, or unconscious. Universally, our brains are wired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wired. Yeah, wired. Are wired to create these stereotypes to make sense of the world and our place in it. Okay, what did you get from this? That stereotypes is not a thing that we that, that we create like a, I don't know like a, uh, I read this book and I ha I, I create that idea because I have a lot of information. The stereotypes I think that based on this that in some cases is something that we can do or think unconscious. We don't think a lot of about about this and I think that uh, the culture the society also can influence in 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 how we how we perceive perceive yeah? or, or how we perceive uh, some some groups maybe or or some people in specific and I think that also this, this, um, the, the stereotypes it can easily uh, uh, form uh, since we, since we, I don't know how to say it. Um, since since we were kids, maybe, or how our family um, or the society, I don't know, maybe how the family teaches. Or 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 how or or maybe how the society tell us uh, is a stereotype, and when when we grow, maybe we can change, uh, and we can we can I don't know how to say teacher emit or we can give maybe a different. Uh, concept or, or 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 maybe we can understand difference the 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 concept or stereotype very good perfect so that is true i mean everybody has stereotypes and we have stereotype other people and sometimes it's conscious sometimes it's unconscious and in my that is the way that the brain is connected so we make sense of the world uh, so maybe the good thing is that we need to be aware that uh, that we're doing something that is not correct and then change it, right? So, but it's it's very interesting how this works. Uh, let's see any words here. I remember peers. What is peers? You remember? Your partners or your coworker. Very good, perfect. And what is to be capable? Is it to be able? To be able, when you can do something, right? And, uh, well, we know what this wire, what is wire? Okay, wire is like, uh, for example, when you have headsets, some of them are wireless with no wire and some are wire right in this case is connected it's connected okay okay let's move on the next part is going to be for let's see 
Marcus. Okay, uh, negative effect of the stereotypes. Actually, it's here on the other column. Okay, okay. A stereotype can often lead to prejudice, which are form opinions about a person that are not based on actual experience or reason. And can lead to favor one person or a group against another. Remarks about race, politics, sex, and gender are Okay. are often based on the most common stereotypes. The stereotype that we learn or observe when we were younger may have been wired into our brains. And as adults, we then may bring them assumption wherever we go, even though they are not always acceptable or inclusive. And um, I continue. Yes, just the other one. Okay. Consider the fact that most people have participated in prejudice and discrimination based upon stereotypes, and also that we most likely fall into one of these stereotyped groups. Okay, what did you get from this? Um, okay, interesting. Okay, um, the, sometimes in our culture, we have some stereotypes when we see um, on a people, a person, and we prejudice um, that people with no real arguments and just by the, the stereotype that the culture bring us. So we, we, we are not, we create sometimes a favorite, a favorite people and we create groups against others so it's not correct and sometimes perhaps not totally our fault because the culture the the stereotype based on on the culture we, we learn from the childhood and when we are and when we are older and we bring that stereotype into our brain so and perhaps that kind of third of stereotype are not accept acceptable. So um, we fall into discrimination based on that kind of stereotypes. Very good. That is true. So some stereotypes can go farther and it can become in, in something that may cause some hurt to other people, right? So discrimination and other things that might come to a, a larger conflict and uh, well many things might happen about that one good let's see if we can see some words i don't think there are many here. remarks what is to remark do i emphasize something very good perfect so as you see there uh, race politics sex and gender are part of the most common stereotypes right Okay, let's move on. Uh, then it says addressing stereotypes. Think about times that stereotypes might have impacted how you have treated someone and how you have been treated, whether it be at work, at home, at a store, or in a social setting. So yeah, everybody has done that one. And we, everybody have been suffered that one, right? Okay, the next one is going to be for Roxana. Okay. Use the table below to think about what assumptions, assumptions, uh -huh. assumptions you have made or that others have made about you regarding stereotypes. Also consider what experience or interactions made you create some of the stereotypes you have about others. Is there any anyone that you know that has broken the mold of your ex stereotype? Continue. Uh, yes, just a chart. Okay. Names. I've been called or 
assumptions, assumptions. Uh -huh. assumptions that have been made about me. Uh, names have called others or assumptions I have made about others. Time I was straight unfaithfully based on a stereotype. Times when I unfairly treat, treated another person based on a stereotype. Okay, what do you get from this? Well, in the first one, uh, in general, people need to uh, try to understand what they have some stereotypes because uh, maybe uh, you are, uh, well, in my words, um, you are more uh, square, quadrado? Square, uh -huh. Square in some topic, and maybe that's why uh, you have some stereotypes, but if they're, they're real, uh, firm, it's not that other person broke your model. Because I think that uh, all of you have uh, her or his own perception about the normal uh, life and everything can, it's not correct, but in general, everything uh, can do or can say whatever. And it's not, uh, you're just your model. So you, need, you need to try to understand the reason why you have that uh, stereotype and try to accept the others because the other person accept you. And you need to work on that and try to uh, maybe not change your uh, model because it's, your, it's just in your mind. It's not a real model. It's your personal model. And maybe when, for example, when the person has looking for a boyfriend or girlfriend, maybe they looking for a, a they are looking a personal, personal model or personal stereotypes in her mind or his mind. But it's a, to be honest, it's a fake uh, model because that is, that is exist, exist just in your mind. Very good, and you provided very good examples. I mean, the last one that you say, I mean, that is true. Um, a lot of people, they are looking for a mate, a boyfriend or girlfriend in with some characteristics, but I mean, it's better for you to, to go and meet people, right? So, because it's kind of difficult to say, I'm, I, I want a boyfriend that is two meters and blonde and blue eyes. <laughs> There are other things that are important, right? Mm -hmm. Physics, of course, is good. I mean, the physical aspect, but um, stereotypes are everywhere in the way that you are going to do something and the way that, I mean, you are on the street and you are seeing somebody driving and you stereotype, right? For example, one of the most common stereotypes here in El Salvador is that is, is there is an accident. Some people in the past, I don't know if now happens, but in the past they say that maybe it was drunk or maybe it was a woman and it's not yeah. true. That is definitely not true, right? But that is something that some generations has taken, has listened to other generations. So it's, it's come to their mind. And sometimes we have treated other people with stereotypes. So that is also true. Good. How to avoid stereotyping others? Um, Yvonne, is it possible for you to read? Not possible. Francisco Eduardo. Hello, teacher. Hello, could you please read here how to avoid stereotyping others? Okay, teacher. How to avoid stereotyping others? Get to know others who appear different from you. Stop yourself before making a snap judgment about others. Consider what you have in common with other people. It may be more than you think. Develop empathy, empathy for others. 
try to walk in their shoes. Educate yourself about different culture and group. What did you get from this? Uh, I think uh, is is essential for uh, uh, for in order to create a uh, uh, good uh, environment uh, because uh, it's, it's possible that uh, we uh, share a time or share with a uh, job with people that uh, your thinking way is different, your look is different. And the, the better or, or, the, or the, the most important is understand that uh, everyone is different, different with, with, with us and uh, understand that is, is very uh, is very basic, very important feature. Very good, perfect. So these these things, I guess, are very nice. It's very important. Get to know two others. That is very important. And they are going to have good things. I mean, not good or bad things, but things that you believe are not good or not. Um, you don't do it the same way. And some other things that you can learn from. So that is being different, right? So even in English, in the pronunciation, you know, there are different ways of saying something. So we need to accept that, one, right? Stop yourself before making snap judgment about other. That I guess is a little bit difficult because you need to educate your mind. You need to change when you need to re-educate. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to, to move, but everybody can do it. Consider what you have in common with other people. It may be more than you think. So that is linked to the first one, get to know others. If you get to know other people, you probably you are going to identify things that you have in common and you are going to, yeah, get a good relationship, right? Develop empathy for others, try to walk in their shoes. Sometimes we don't know what has happened. Sometimes people, they have a very bad day, right? There was somebody in a trainer that told, told us once and it was very true. I, I mean, sometimes you have problems, you have uh, things, you have conflicts, you're angry, uh, or somebody's angry, but nobody, nobody in the world gets up in the morning and says, today I'm going to crash my car. All right, accidents happens. And you need to be, to have that empathy, to try to understand that maybe that person is through a situation or is not feeling well, Many things might be happening. So it's important that. Educate yourself about different cultures and groups. That is another thing, right? That we can read, we can check. Maybe here in El Salvador is not that remarkable, but if you go to, for example, the US, I mean, maybe you are going to be there with people from India, Chinese people, people from Europe, and everybody has different different ways of being. I mean, for example, I was once in a training in Europe and uh, the first time that I was there, it was very strange that I saw people from France, from Germany, you know, and those people, we, we, we were there one week and they were wearing exactly the same clothes the whole week. Well, I, I didn't know. I mean, I, I took different clothes. We do that one, but they have different cultures. We maybe don't understand that one, but that's the way it is, all right? So things like that happen, okay? Okay, so let's check about the last part. That is going to be four, let's see. Uh, Fernando, is it possible for you? Not possible. Danny. Yeah, sure. Good. Uh, key takeaways. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, key takeaways. Uh, 
it is important to educate ourselves and continue to do self-assessment about our, our stereotypes and how they are potentially interfering with our interactions. Our professional and personal selves suffer when we ju judge people based on bias, bi biases, 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 labels, and stereotypes. We could miss out, miss out uh, on valuable, valuable experiences, insights, and relationships and connecting with other on a genuine, genuine level. Very good, what do you get from this? Um, <clears throat> well, we have to, we have to be uh, the, that kind of person, <laughs> um, the, the, or, or we, we have to, to treat uh, other person like we want to, to, to other treat us, right? And we don't have to, to we have to evaluate, right? In, the, in, in how we are uh, treating another person. And sometimes we, we don't realize when, when, when we do some kind of these things. And, for example, <laughs> and that uh, the, the, the people who live here or, or were born here in San Salvador, <laughs> stereotypes the people from another <laughs> department, like San Miguel. <laughs> I, in the university, I, I, I was, <laughs> and I, 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 well, I, I listen to more of that kind of thing that, oh, you, you talk with, with Jay, <laughs> or <laughs> you talk like that, or you eat that kind of thing. I don't know, but and I, 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 I never felt often or something like that. Um, but yeah, we, we have to to be the, 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 this kind of person that don't uh, stereotype uh, another because um, because everything, right? First, first of all. Uh, <laughs> You don't want to be a bad person, right? Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, you need, you want to be respected and you want to respect other people. And um, you are so true. I mean, I guess in all Latin America, we stereotype a lot, a lot. I mean, if somebody is kind of fat, we have a nickname, right? If somebody's tall, there is a nickname. If somebody's short, there is a nickname. That happens in all Latin America. Yeah. very very common culturally i mean if you are like from this place you are like this or if you if you uh, have gone to this school you are like this so those all those are stereotypes maybe the good thing is that in also in latin america we don't take that seriously at least not the most of the people right so uh, we need to be careful because of course there are people that might feel that is not going to, I mean, it, they will get offended. So that is not good. Anyways, at work is even worse. I mean, we need to be more careful about these things. Okay. Have you ever, uh, that is a question for everybody is talking about stereotypes. Have you ever been a stereotype in a different way? So could you please share an experience for you or a colleague where stereotype, and maybe there was a conflict or something that went wrong? Or maybe funny things. Well, in my case, when I start working in a specific uh, company, I remember that the other department has um, older people and they attack me all the time. And it stopped around one year before, no. After. After, sorry, after. And it was very um, stressful for me because uh, I think that the problem 
in that time was that I was too younger, maybe, and I have a, a specific task for payment in my work. And I don't know, maybe that person was disagree about my function. And I, I think that um, he hate that other uh, person younger than then was uh, telling what they need to do. Well, in my case, I, I sent some payment and always I uh, asked for a program, a programmation in the future, in the next week, for example, uh, I, I asked for um, my payment and that person always was uh, talking me or uh, send emails to her and it was um, awful because I, I, I think that when you have working in a, in a company, you try to create a good environment and it's complex when you don't receive the, the same. The same respect. Yeah, that's it. That, that is it. I mean, as we were telling, uh, maybe the stereotype there is that you were the new and you were younger. Sometimes happens that some people, they feel attacked. They feel like, I mean, I don't know why, to be honest with you, but that might yeah. be something that and uh, and actually that can become in harassment right that is another thing it's another level it's not the same to say the stereotype ah she's young and maybe she doesn't know many things about this than to attack you that is a different level so it's not good but at the end at Roxanne was everything fine was solved the problem or they are not in the company anymore well I'm not sure maybe they accept Accept me, but it's complex because always I receive um, como una pared, no sé. Okay. Yeah, okay. between us, always uh, were a uh, hard relationship, just working, but uh, it was complex because uh, I remember that all the time, if I needed to uh, receive an answer about the payment, always I needed to copy to my uh, boss because if I didn't do that, they, they, don't, they didn't respond. They might. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's complex, but everything is okay because uh, we was working in different department and the communication just was twice on a week or just for closing. Yeah, it's, it not, isn't a current relationship between, between us. Okay, very good. I hope everything goes better there, so. Thank you. Good. Any other opinion, any other comment? And other experience that you know or that happens to you or to a colleague? Um, in my case, I have an experience, like Roxana said, in my first job. I remember when I Begin like the the job the the job the the boss that I had um I don't know in the interview in the first interview I mentioned that for example I was studying I was studying and I it was like and the um, semester number ten and almost I finish the career. But I had to mention because she asked me for what is your current level, your academic level. It was not something that I was, uh, if, I don't know, 
I wasn't stuck up, for example. I was not, um, I don't know how to say it. Yeah, stuck up, like, um, um, Expecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was something essential to mention because he asked me. And uh, from, from, from that interview, yeah, I get the job. It, it was for, uh, I was applied for a um, station job, just two or one month in half. It was just for the season. So perhaps the, the, the boss in that time saying that I was uh, something that uh, I was someone to replace replace her in, in her job because um, you know sometimes that kind of people uh, yeah they don't she uh, didn't have studies for that for that job so when they say uh, some someone with that is studying and um, they think perhaps that is someone to will be replace them in the future. But that was not my, my intention. I just um, passing the time and, and um, leverage or gain a, a profit of, of the, the time, the vacation. So I decided to job to, to work in, in that in that place. So yeah, um, for example, I remember once that she told me I I I, um, I was selling a, a electrodomestic and I let it alone in in one in one place because it was very full the, the the store and I was very busy so I let that that electrodomestic in one place alone and she, and she told me that. <laughs> If someone is, is still that traumatic, I have to pay for that. But I was, I just, I was um, selling it. I just not let it, um, that electromagnetic in that place, just for being um, mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, I don't know. On, Uncareful? <laughs> no, no, I don't know how to say. It. I yeah. was busy and I was selling that electrodomestic, so even I was about to sell it, so I have to get it out from the from the storage, and and yeah, she told me that, and just for make me feel like I was doing something wrong then. Yeah, I continue doing my job, doing my, my task the best I can. And she um, um, gradually stopped from that behavior. So um, in, in the beginning, it was very disgusting for me because, you know, I was with the, I went to that job with the, the, the best intention the first job and gain some experience and yeah uh, fine with that kind of of our our arrangement yeah uh, it was not funny for me but um um at the end i think yeah in the in, in the professional world at some point we will find someone like that. So we have to handle with, with that and keep on going. So that was, that was my experience. Perfect, thank you for sharing. And yeah, you mentioned something that is very important. I mean, you were able to identify that uh, maybe they felt threatened that you were going to, to look for her position or things like that. So that happens a lot. The most of the time, in my experience, when somebody is harassing another person at job is because they feel afraid of that person. They they attack because they feel that you are there because of something. I don't know, something is going on. They have a bad perception of something. And uh, well, that happens, that happens. And you are right. So 
sooner or later we are going to find people like that on the way, right? Sometimes might be at, at work, sometimes might be in different situations in life. So we need just to, to move on and be as professional as we as we can. But of course, it's, it's difficult. I mean, so the, the problem is this. I mean, maybe for the people that they did that, that they were like attacking person because they were defending, maybe they don't even remember that. Thing. But the person that feel the attack, maybe we never forget, right? It's like, oh, I remember that time that person told me these words and I felt very bad. So it's a big problem because we need to be careful about what we were going to say. Maybe sometimes we also say something or did something without intention and we made other people feel bad, right? So that is the case as well. And sometimes we don't even notice about that one. Any other opinion, any other comment about this? Any other experience that you would like to share about work conflicts or things like that? Teacher, for me, this kind of way of thinking or this kind of feelings are uh, discrimination. And they are prohibiting and not a company's code of conduct, right? That is it. So yeah, I guess in all companies is, is not permitted. Maybe the problem, I guess, is that when you feel attacked, when you feel harassed, sometimes you are not confident to go and say that to your boss or to the human resources department. You try to handle it yourself. I don't know why that happens. Maybe because you're afraid of what is going to happen. You don't want more problems. But the problem is that, that in the most of the cases, they, the people, they don't go and speak out. They just stay there, try to handle it. Only if the situation is terrible and you really like your job, you do something. Some of the cases, in some of the cases, some people, they prefer to go to other job actually. So it's, it's difficult, it's difficult, it's, it's, I mean, it's a real, real problem. So maybe the thing that companies should do is to reinforce that, right? Via email, stop doing this, do this, try to also get meetings, so social meetings. So for example, one thing that they do is that it's very common is birthday, right? So it's the birthday of one person and we're going to join and we're going to, and then you can socialize and get to, to actually know the other person. So in that case, maybe you will be able to say, oh, before I used to feel like this with you, but now I know that you are a very nice person. Many things happens. And if something like that happens to you, the best recommendation is to go and speak out with your boss or with the human resources to try to find a balance, right? It's not that you are going to make the other person to, to be fired. That's not your intention, but you need to be in a good environment. You need to. Good. Any other opinion or comment? So there are many stereotypes. For example, one stereotype that is very common in Latin America, not only in El Salvador, is that people that work at the government, they are not that good or they are not kind, right? They are like, no, not here, go to the other window, go to. So what do you think about that? Is that true? Are the people like that or is a bad stereotype? Yeah, well, in my opinion, when I have to go to one institution uh, by the government, 
it's really bad when you arrive with all document with all the documents that you have to present and those people only tell you like no you have to bring other uh, paper and give uh, another specify that never was advised that you have to use so it's really bad i don't know why I don't know why the government institutions are like that. That is because true. Um, go ahead. They give you some requirements uh, in advance, uh, but by you uh, present at the moment that they stay there, but I don't know why. They usually do that. Very true. So yeah, that happens. That, that is very common. It's a stereotype that is very common that, that you go to the government, sometimes they treat you very bad. So, well, in my experience, I have gone and the most of the time was a good experience, but yeah, sometimes it's kind of difficult. I don't know why. Yeah, it's really irritating. Yeah, because you need to do something, right? And Be, sometimes- you. Uh -huh. You don't have enough time to invest. That is true. And sometimes the directions are not clear, right? Yeah. So they give you a paper with some, a list of things. You try your best to bring all your things. And whenever you bring the paper, it's like, no, you need to be, you need to put it like this or set it like this. That happens a lot to me at the university, you know. Uh, there was, last yeah, that, that was very bad experience. Anyways, that happens, my friends. Okay, so we will be finishing the class of today. And let's check the attendance the very last time. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josue Garcia Martinez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejia. Present, teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Sarguero de Rivas. Present, teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present, teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejia. Present teacher. Thank Good. you. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Wait, he's here, but he Okay. For Ramon is the 101 of today, just in case. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejia. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. Perfect, Suleima. Okay, so my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. Rest very well. Dream in English and see you, you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Bye, everybody. Thank you, teacher. Good night, everybody. Good evening. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hello, Raymond. Hello. Hello, can you hear me?
Hello, Raymond. Can you hear me? Hello. 